Hello. <laughs> Hello. W welcome, everybody. How you going? Just wait for a couple more people. All right. How are you all going? All right. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So this uh, this is the the talk. Um, it's labelled Beatbox uh, Next Generation VM for Local Development. So. Um, we're going to discuss a bit about the project we've uh, been working on um, as part of sort of Drupal Melbourne that's backed. So, um, yeah, so my name is Tom Tugard. Um, I'm a, a Kiwi that's actually living in Melbourne now. Um, yeah, still, still repping the New Zealand accent, of course. Um, and yeah, I've been doing Drupal since about 2006. So um, it's a wee while now. Um, yeah, still loving it. So anyway, we'll get started. So um, today we're basically going to uh, introduce you to this project called Beatbox. Um, it is a virtualized development environment. So we're going to start off sort of introducing that concept and make sure everyone understands what that means. Um, we're going to yeah, jump into the Beatbox, talk about why. Um, there's a whole bunch of projects around uh, virtualization and things at the moment. Um, we'll talk specifically what makes Beatbox different. Um, we'll go over, have an overview of the, um, the tool set that, the tools that we use to build the project itself. Um, hopefully we'll fit in a few demos um, that have been recorded for safety reasons. Um, we'll quickly touch on uh, how uh, project use, utilizes uh, con continuous integration and uh, continuous delivery. Um, hopefully introduce you to the way that you can potentially contribute to the project, it's, it is open source. Um, and then touch on the, the roadmap of, of where we're going with the project itself. So to, to jump straight into it, um, so what is virtualization? Um, virtualization essentially is a way that you can create a machine, essentially, or something inside something else. Um, it, it's, it's great for uh, you know, high density applications because you have a single big server and you can run a whole bunch of little machines inside it and, and try and get full utilization out of, out of those resources. Um, it's really good for replicating because, um, because it's all virtualized, often you can pretty much cookie cut these virtualize things, uh, clone them, back them up easily, um, that sort of stuff. And it, it creates sort of an isolation environment inside a server. So you can have a single server with a whole bunch of um, machines, and they can be different operating systems, um, you know, run different apps and have completely different stacks. So uh, virtualization is, is really great for, um, for that sort of stuff. So what that means is for what does virtualization mean for uh, development? Um, so it's actually great for allowing you to work on multiple different projects, um, and these can have completely different stacks um, and also different versions and that sort of thing, but not conflict with each other. So um, yeah, so for the Drupal world, you could actually have multiple projects and have varying different versions of Drush for example, um, and they all work nicely together. <clears throat> it, uh, it really lowers that cost of experimentation as well. So you can actually very easily make experimental changes, things that you may, uh, may or may not work, um, and quickly roll back because you'd normally take a snapshot of a virtualized environment, test something out, and easily roll back. Um, it, limits the impact of host updates. So I don't know, I've been through it before, but uh, when, whenever you update your host machine, so your operating system, or even uh, your stack, like if you're using LAMP or WAMP, um, that can potentially impact the projects um, that you're working on. So this just removes that uh, issue because the machine itself doesn't get uh, updated, so yeah. It works quite well. Um, it also means that you can often automate the actual build of these virtualization environments. 
So there's no real manual task of, especially when you get a new laptop, having to go through and set up all your development tools exactly how you want them. This, uh, you can often just automate it, script it out, and share it with a, uh, with a team. So it leads on to the next one, so it's shareable, which is really, really good for a team environment. It means that you're all working on the exact same machine, essentially. So you're creating something. Um, if it works in one place, it should definitely work in another place. Um, but also for myself, um, I actually have, you know, have my machine at home and a machine at work. I'm able to keep them in sync, and I don't have to actually carry the laptop around, and they're identical, so it's it's great for, for shareability. Um, and the whole really concept about it, you don't have to, but you really want to make your development environment as much as close to your production environment, and if it can be exactly the same, that's great because um, essentially any bugs that you see in production, you can very easily replicate, and uh, you know fix up any issues. Um, plus, you know what, what you're developing. As soon as you deploy it, it's, it's going to run fine on production. So, so that sort of leads us into uh, Beatbox. Um, so Beatbox is a particular project for creating VMs um, and managing these VMs and integrating with your project. So it's built with uh, Packer. Um, Vagrant and Ansible, um, and it's, as mentioned, supported and maintained by the Drupal Melbourne community. Um, so a bit of the background is uh, we had a camp uh, last year, uh, Drupal camp, and um, we were working, there were a couple of people working on similar sort of projects, and what we tried to do is establish a baseline, um, a way that we could actually work at some level that we could share as much as possible, but still provide the flexibility to really customize as you needed to. So this essentially was um, the birth of, of Beebox. So the benefit specific to, um, to Beebox is it actually uh, uses uh, a pre-provision base box, um, which is quite different to, to most other um, projects. Um, and this really speeds up the actual build, the build time. Um, uh, I've used a lot of Vagrant projects, and um, if you've used it before, sometimes it can take you know a good half an hour, even an hour, to build that initial phase. Um, and the problem there is that you know you're wasting not only that time, but uh, you're you're more likely to want to fix up and patch your existing environment if you hit a problem rather than just blow it away and rebuild it. You know, if it only takes five, 10 minutes to rebuild and you run into an issue, um, the first thing you want to do is just blow it away and just rebuild. So this is, leads on to the next thing is, essentially there's a, a term coined called uh, pets versus cattle. And that relates to how you treat your uh, infrastructure um, or even your development environment. So um, a lot of the time, so if you've got, let's say, a lamp stack locally, um, you know, you care about it, you treat it like a pet. If something breaks, you want to fix it up, um, you know, and, 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 yeah, you care about what's actually happening. Whereas with this sort of a project, where we're basically saying that hopefully the, the build is clean and it works, and if you do run into any problems, you, the first thing you do is just blow it away and uh, rebuild. Um, that's the best thing to do. So, go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not vegetarian. But, um, <clears throat> yeah. So the the great thing about it, and this is um, this came, I guess, during the development actually of Beatbox, um, is we we started off with this idea that they would be pre-provisioned. Um, so that means the box comes pre-packaged with a lamp stack. Um, for example, drip, uh, Drush is installed and all that sort of stuff. But um, the, the really great thing about that is this uh, linked clones concept, which was only recently added to Vagrant. Um, and this basically um, uh, means that every project that you build from Beatbox is a clone of this base box. 
Um, so many other Vagrant projects uh, essentially starts with a very base level um, base box, which would let's say is around 200, 300 meg. Um, and then you pr provision this on top and that would add another two, 300 meg to the box. And if you do that 20 times, you end up with 20 machines all really huge in size and, and you do uh, run out of disk space. So linked clones means that we actually have a single uh, master VM, which is the base box. Um, and every project you spin up from that is is just a clone and it's changes to the pre-provisioned base box. So um, it can, you know, each project can actually, the size can be only a couple of meg essentially because it's only tracking the changes. So that means you actually have hundreds of projects um, all using the same base box. So we've, we've gone for the way uh, as well, is trying to make it as clean as possible to integrate into an existing project. Um, we really want to make it easy so you can use it or you can actually commit this and integrate it into an existing project. And hopefully it will be um, also vision control. So um, that means it can be shared around a, a team or for other developers in the future. Um, we've decided to try and make sure there's the minimal amount of host dependencies. So we really only have uh, Vagrant is a um, project that we you need and VirtualBox at the stage. Um, there's a couple of plugins that we still um, require, but you can um, only if you're on Windows. Yeah, yeah, that's been a challenge. Um, so yeah, it's all, it's all CI backed. So um, uh, that just means that we can easily make changes, test them, um, and also provides the stability. So as we roll out new features, it's, it's well tested. Um, saying that, it's, we practice sort of snapshot releases. So, um, so because these boxes are pre-provisioned, um, we don't release these every day. Um, so every few weeks, Will actually tag a new release and that goes and rebuilds this new base box. Um, benefit of doing that is that it was tested and built at a point in time um, and we sort of know it's going to work. Um, so other projects you you build you could be building you know within an hour period and there could be changes you know. Um, so this way it's sort of built whatever two weeks ago it was stable it was a known working state. So it's community uh, supported, which is uh, which is great because uh, you know it allows anyone to get involved and, and provide best practices and uh, whatnot, um, as well as open source. So we have a very simple um, abstracted config structure. Um, it's all YAML based, um, and that is specifically like a, a descriptive type language rather than instructive. So. That means rather than particularly saying install this package, we just say we want this version or these packages or whatnot. I'll get into demos and show you about that. Um, it's very, very highly extensible. So um, we've got you know thousands of these config attributes that you can change, but we've also had the ability to, to really just go nuts and create your own um, tasks, and, and I'll demo that in, in a second. Um, <clears throat> so it, it, it allows you essentially to keep what your project dependencies or your infrastructure dependencies inside your code base um, and that can be version controlled, branched and, and whatnot. So you can actually, as an example, um, you can state that you want this project to be on say, PHP 5.6, you can create a branch and that branch can be on PHP 7 um, and that means when you build that branch that branch will, and the VM will run on PHP 7. And that's great for, say, migration projects. So r while work is still going in the, in the main branch on, say, 5.6, you you're able to test new features and then that upgrade path to 7. So we're focused on um, making sure it's, it, it's got a really good modular architecture. Um, so we're, we're uh, yeah, so basically the, the project itself is, is a way that we manage this base box build. All, all the functionality and the features that we add um, 
are kind of like modules and they are externally supported. Um, and that means they also can be reused by other projects, which is um, really cool. Um, and it, it really provides that standardised model for, uh, for both training and, and onboarding. So um, I've worked on projects before where essentially the first day is basically setting up your development environment because it's a very complex project. Um, what we want to do is throw all the dependencies, all the setup, into the project itself, um, defined in, in config. Um, and basically the setup of a project should be get pull Vagrant up and you get all your dependencies, all the right versions, and you're ready to go. <clears throat> so um, that leads on to sort of the features that um, come with Beatbox by default. So at the moment we, we do default to uh, 5.6. We've got um, the Apache 2.4 MySQL. Um, <clears throat> inside this, this the latest version Composer, uh, Drush, uh, Xdebug, XHProf, uh, Memcache, and MailHog. So this is just uh, by default. So if you just pull up a project, don't configure anything, um, that's basically what you get. Um, but on the other side, we've got a whole bunch of optional features that you can enable and configure. Um, so you can upgrade to PHP 7, use Nginx as your web server, um, install other platforms like Node and Ruby, um, and that sort of stuff. So it's, it's really uh, configurable. So uh, I'll quickly touch on the, the tool set that we actually use to build the project. Um, so it is a, it's a Vagrant project, and Vagrant is essentially a, a wrapper for, a, um, for building virtual machines. So it's a way that you can script um, and determine um, a, a machine that will control a hypervisor, and we use um, VirtualBox. And VirtualBox is the actual virtualization technology that will um, run your machine. On top of that, we use Ansible, um, and Ansible is, is the provisioning layer. So Vagrant will set it up, it'll give your machine an IP, it'll sync in disk, uh, you know, mount uh, your code base, um, and all that sort of stuff. VirtualBox runs it, Ansible comes in and actually configures that machine and builds it out. Um, so we use Packer. Um, Packer is the tool we use to actually build these base boxes, um, and we do utilize the, uh, the Packer sort of paid service um, Atlas, um, and that is all uh, cloud-based uh, SaaS product. So for CI, we've, um, we're using Circle. Um, Circle's really, really good in this case uh, because it allows you to actually SSH into a, a build and um, do some debugging. A lot of development actually is, I do actually on Circle uh, because it means I can just create a fork, test something out, SSH in and, and, and essentially develop in, in a clean environment. Um, and it's all um, hosted actually on, on GitHub and um, yeah, so these are the tool set that we use. So we'll get into a, a, a quick demo. Um, Hopefully this isn't too small. Um, here we go. So to quickly explain um, what I've done uh, on the side here, um, it is very, very small, sorry. Um, I, I've gone and downloaded the latest version of Drupal, um, which is 8.2.1. Um, so just using Drush. Um, I've entered into the actual project directory here. Um, and this is essentially initializing Beatbox. So we're, we're pulling in the project's Vagrant file, um, which you can see on the right there, um, which is essentially just a stub. Yeah. Too small? Yeah. Um, can you? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. There's not much really to read, but I can actually show you this, this file outside. Um, yeah, which is a bit easier. Um, we, can, we can talk to that after, perhaps. Um, 
But yeah, so just to show you that this is the basic setup of a new project, but this could be an existing project, like an existing code base. And all you need to do is drop this vagrant file into your project. Um, once that's done, um, and you've got uh, Vagrant VirtualBox set up, you'll essentially just run a, a Vagrant up, um, and that will do a couple of things, hopefully you'll see on the right side there. Um, it's introduced a couple of, uh, of more directories, and these directories are, are what you use to basically for the configuration. Um, so what I can do is actually skip through this bit, because uh, so this will take about, let's say, five minutes, depending on your machine and, and spec. But um, in that time, I'll be able to just show you what it's created. Uh, yeah. um, essentially, just it's created this beatbox folder for you um, and this configuration file. And this configuration file is where we'll um, provide the configuration for, for the build itself. So after this is built, um, we can just close that one. Um, what we end up with is, uh, is, is this on the side. So this is basically the, the next result of that Vagrant up. We can see that Beatbox has, has come up. Um, we've got the URL. We've got some information about how, um, how it can be configured. And this URL here on the right, you can see, allows us to go and install Drupal. So, yeah. Josh aliases? Yep. Yeah, so it, 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 that's part of the, the requirements in terms of the plugins. So we, we do um, rely on host manager, which is um, on Windows. It, yeah, you don't need it. Correct, yes. Yeah, and if you're using multiple domains, you, yeah, you will need it. Domains, you need it. If you're just doing a single domain in the context, there's a service inside the beatbox that broadcasts the domain out to your machine. Mm -hmm. And if your machine is Linux or Mac, it will be able to do that. If your machine is Windows, it's just plain enough. Yeah. So, and, and just to explain, that's basically mapping these domains because obviously they don't exist in real life. So, inside your machine, you've got to be able to map. <laughs> what that domain points to um, and which virtual machine. So yeah, so this is the default build. Um, what we do is we grab whatever the directory was, um, add append local, and that's your default, um, your, your default domain. But so what we'll do here, so rather than actually going and installing Drupal manually, we're gonna add a couple more configuration items here. Um, and as you just can't see the text, what we've done is we've added three lines here. We're saying we want to install the site, um, and then we're saying the account we want will be admin and the password will be admin. Where are the... Uh, in the docs, yeah. So uh, this is this is pretty much explaining the, the quick start guide. Um, so they are in on our main readme file. Correct, yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it's pretty simple, uh, yeah, so this is saying, you know, once you get to the point where we know that Drupal's there, we're gonna actually install the site and use this user account and password. So as we go along, um, we're also, yeah, can't see it there. Um, we're also changing the domain um, to d8.local, just to make it a bit easier. Um, so you can see there. But back on the project, all we do is we basically edit that file, save it, um, and we're doing a, a vagrant reload um, and reprovisioning it. And so what this will do is it'll just restart the virtual machine, read in this config, and apply it. So it's it's pretty simple. Uh, okay. So rather than waiting for that, I will jump back to here um, and this is basically what we end up with again so we end up with the the same thing as before but the, the main difference is is we've actually now got a, a login link because we've got a 
And we're hacking, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, all, it's really leaked, yeah. Um, yeah, so this gives you a, a nice login link, um, which means that you can just click that one-time login link, click it, and it will log you straight into Drupal. Um, and you can share this around to anyone, and they can vagrant up with that configuration, and they'll end up exactly with the same thing. So that's no messing around with um, databases or installs or anything. Um, which has also made it really good for for meetups and, and the like because we can um, create projects and demo specific features um, and share a repository that um, other people can, can test. So yeah, so you can see I'm logged in um, and these basically Drupal 8.2.1, yeah, Patch 5.6 and all that sort of stuff. So that's uh, all good and well. but. The, um, that's Drupal specific, uh, but what we can do is obviously any of these configuration items um, can be changed. Um, we'll go to the next. So that leads on to extending, and this is what we've sort of touched on with the uh, the configuration um, file. So the, the config.yaml, it's obviously in, in YAML format. These uh, variables, um, because we're actually using a whole bunch of external roles, um, it's it's a bit of a case-by-case case in terms of what they are, but um, we've tried our best to sort of list some generic um, examples. And inside the project, we actually have a whole bunch of these uh, variables that you can uh, reuse. So to the left here is basically an example of a, of, of a project which extends, uh, has its own Apache configuration. Um, has some custom modules that we want to enable, um, sets up sort of the error reporting for PHP, does that sort of thing. So it's all hierarchical as well. So we've inside the project itself, we've got um, a whole bunch of default config. And this is where you actually uh, don't need anything because it will roll back to a uh, another configuration items. So if we removed any of those lines, um, at some point in the project, there is a setting for it. So the concept of this config.yaml file is you're always overriding something, right? So you're always wanting to find what you want, what it is at the moment, and you can go and override what that is. Um, and it's important to know that because, um, let's say, for example, a list like, like here, um, if we were to add a module, let's say just the orphan core, um, it wouldn't add the other uh, modules. So because we, we would actually want to bring in the default ones and add our new ones. So it, it overrides rather than inherits, if that makes sense. So it also uh, means that we can add, add roles, add roles, and roles, um, uh, these pieces of functionality that allows us to um, to extend, and we looked at those features before. So the um, the other awesome uh, part of this is Ansible tasks. So this really allows you to take uh, Beatbox and really customize the hell out of it, um, because yeah, you may not like what we do. You can disable something and completely extend it. It also is great sort of um, feeding ground for contributing back to the project because you can create all of these custom tasks and you'll, you'll find that for, for projects you'll reuse a lot of these. Um, and if you start reusing a lot, probably it's helpful for other people and other projects and we can push that upstream and into the project so everyone can utilize these things. So you can use it for installing packages, um, creating specific config files, um, and a really useful one is importing a database. So, yeah. So this is an Correct. Yes, yes, it is. So, so this is all raw um, Ansible. Um, there's yeah some documentation about that, um, but Ansible had just has a, hundreds of uh, modules that you can use. So, in the example on the right, we're just using the command module. And um, this would, what this does, it's, it's part of a post deployment or post provisioning. 
Um, and so when we bring up this particular project, it will actually uh, do an SQL sync with the production environment and um, bring that down and uh, run updates for you as well. Yeah, that's right. So um, very easily you can, can obviously configure this inside the project and just say, yeah, uh, clone this repository, vagrant up, and that can actually go and pull in a database, either a dump or via Drush. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, and this is where you can actually do a lot of that stuff in config. So you can define like node packages and do all that sort of stuff in config. Um, but if you, if we didn't have a feature or we didn't support something, you can jump into this uh, custom task situation um, and really just install anything, configure anything you want. Cool. So quickly look at what's the demo. So this. Here, we've basically just done a quick change of the, the PHP time zone. Um, again, just quick edit on the, uh, on the config side, and then on the side, we just provision it. And, and this basically means that uh, we end up with a, uh, a server with the, with the time zone change. You can't actually see it, but sorry about that. Um, but you can see you could, you could change your PHP memory limit. Any of these um, settings are configurable in usually in config. Um, the last quick demo, oh, hopefully you can show, is uh, is Drush. So we we do support um, the creation of Drush aliases, um, and we've added now that to be is optional. Um, so you add in a new uh, new variable there called Drush create alias, um, and that will create uh, an alias for you. Um, in this case, we've, we've called it uh, d8.local, um, and as you can see from the host machine, we can just run Drush commands directly um, inside the VM via a Drush alias. So, yeah, so that's sort of a quick introduction to how the project works. Um, so we, we also, like I mentioned, practice continuous delivery. Um, the project itself, so fully hosted on uh, GitHub, everything that the project needs is in that repository. Um, and that means to actually go and build and run the tests and everything. Um, so every commit to master inside that project will go and create a new uh, version of Beak Dev, which is our latest development box. So um, some cases you want some feature that you you know we've just committed. You can actually override in your configuration and use our latest version of development. Um, it is it is usually pretty stable. <coughs> um, and on the other hand, when we tag a new, uh, we create a new release in GitHub, that automatically triggers a build of our um, box, which is the default for everybody. And these are meant to be far more stable. Um, and, and we do that sort of every, let's say, two, three weeks, maybe every month. So yeah, so to, to add, to contribute, um, so like I said, it's all on um, GitHub. And we just use the uh, GitHub pull request model, where you can actually fork this project. Um, the project, by default, um, comes in a state that's fully set up for debugging. So it'll actually um, sort of uh, mount in any of our custom provisioning scripts and it does all that sort of stuff. So this is where it can be quite confusing for people because they see the project itself and think that you need the project to use the tool. Um, you don't need the project, you just need that Vagrant file to get started. Um, but the project itself is fully usable and forkable um, and you can actually have your own version if you wanted to in, in the company. Um, there's a contributing guide um, in our documentation. Um, the biggest thing to remember is because we, we, we really strive for that modular architecture, a lot of the features and functionality are external. Um, so you might find the feature or, or change that you're wanting to make isn't actually part of this project. It's, it's somewhere else, but we can, um, we can guide um, as required. 
So quickly touching on the, on the roadmap of the project and where we're sort of heading. Um, so we are still obviously using uh, Vagrant and virtual machines. Um, this is fairly old technology now, and um, there are really cool tools like Docker and containers and whatnot. Um, the major issue at the moment is, is support for uh, multi, multiple platforms. Um, also, there's some fairly serious performance issues um, with mounts and whatnot. So um, we haven't moved to Docker, but that's definitely where um, where we're trying to go. And I've even, you know, we've even got some proof of concept stuff, which basically at this stage demonstrates how bad the performance is. But hopefully Docker's... Yeah, it's... it's Yep. Yeah, so it's, it's awesome for CI, and we do have a Docker file in the project. Um, so that leads to the next one, better CI integration. So this is where we're wanting to try and um, make, it, make the project work uh, very nicely with that. We're going to look at doing profiles, and profiles essentially, rather than having to really maintain these lists of configuration, what we'd rather do is, like, say, you'd have one configuration item saying, I'm running this project on Acquia or Platform or, or Pantheon, and as a community, we'd maintain the configuration set for those um, profiles. Um, as talked about uh, containerization, and we're, we're more than happy for ideas and features to, to go into issues required. So I've got to uh, sort of quickly touch on a few things to so say thanks. Um, thanks to the Drupal Melbourne community, we're, we're really uh, being able to Sort of be the guinea pigs for this project and uh, thrash out some of the, um, the the difficulties getting this working. Jeff Gerling, um, who's uh, been uh, referred to as the Dave Reed of Ansible, um, <laughs> he he is the project and maintainer of Drupal VM, and we actually reuse a lot of their roles, so which gives us a lot of synergy between the projects and a lot of the. Uh, pull requests or work that we do uh, contributes to both projects. Um, and features, for example, like custom tasks, we've actually developed it in Beatbox and pushed that up to Drupal VM. Um, he's got a really good book uh, called Ansible for DevOps, which I'd, I'd recommend if you're interested in getting to, to, uh, to Ansible. And we've got to thank HashiCorp. So they actually provide us with a, uh, a free Vagrant Enterprise um, account and that allows us to do all of our builds in that in the, in the cloud. So yeah, so that's Beatbox and hopefully we have maybe some time for. A we do, questions. we do. So we've got about five minutes for questions before lunch. Um, so what I'll do is if I'll get a show of hands and I'll come over and first question here. So this isn't necessarily a question, but rather a quick um, statement, I guess. Um, we use Beatbox, like I'm heavily involved in it, but we use Beatbox for our clients and we're using it at VU at the moment. Um, and one of the things that we've done, which I'd like to document and add into the, the you know, process at some point, is derivatives of Beatbox, which basically means that, you know, we've added so many things to our stack on Beatbox, like Selenium and Java and Chrome and et cetera, things that, you know, we need to provi provision again on top and they're things that are so big that they take additional time. So we had it back at one stage where it was back to 45 minutes. So um, with Beatbox, with the Packer side of stuff, there's very simple ways, like I will document at some point, to, to provision your own Vagrant base box from Beatbox without hacking it, without forking it, just by adding in your additional configuration and then having a pre-provisioned version for your client-specific box. Um, so if anyone is considering it, um, have a chat to me or look out for a post at some point. Anyone? Mm. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Thanks, Stuart. Anyone else? I'll jump over here. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering, do you have any support for legacy PHP versions like 5.5, 5.4, 5.3 or Apache 2.2? Um, so, yeah, so by default, um, I think we may still support 5.5, um, but if you needed an older version, you'd have to go down the, uh, the custom task route and actually, um, unfortunately, you'd have to remove probably what's there and then install an older version. 
Um, yeah, sorry. But you shouldn't really be using <laughs> anything before 5.6 now because it's yeah. out of support. Yeah, it's only sometimes we grab projects and they from older servers and they're only running on PHP like 5.4, say. Okay. And if it doesn't work on 5.6, our development environment is kind of screwed. So sure. sometimes we have to sort of backport, you know. Yep. But yeah. Yeah, but you shouldn't probably be running any production server on, on those versions. They're, they're, they're no longer security maintained. Suppress some errors and so, move on. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> if it's internal, it's fine. So, yeah. uh, so Tom, thanks for yep. the talk. That was great. Um, that is a really sensible and well-considered project. So thank you. Um, I commend you and Stuart and Alex and the whole team. And, um, yeah, my only question is, are you planning on doing a T-shirt? Uh, yeah, there's been talks. Um, we're also maybe planning on getting a better logo because it's pretty... It's all right, but, yeah, I guess we'll create an issue in GitHub. <laughs> yeah, you can track it. <laughs> we'll let you know. Oh, yeah, Sprintbox. So, um, yeah, this is another thing. It's a derivative... Um, of Beatbox, we're, we're actually working on it at the moment as a sprint box, um, and we're talking about trying to get this into uh, Drupal cons and whatnot. So it's a it's a it's a VM which would have everything you need for a sprint. Um, that actually includes like an IDE, um, an IRC client, um, effectively everything inside a box that you can bring up very easily. So that's also uh, a repository out there, um, and if anyone's keen to get involved, just let us know. Yeah. So. Um uh, cutting on James there. Um, my question is, like, what I find is Beatbox and similar projects like Drupal VM are highly abstracted and they actually take away the experience from a lot of developers of actually understanding what's going on because either that works for them or it doesn't work for them or someone else handles it for them. So if someone's going to be weighing up Beatbox versus, say, Scotchbox, mm -hmm. which, has, which is basically out of the box, a bunch of stuff that you probably don't need but everything ready to go, um, what would your suggestion be about their choice? Yeah, so uh, I guess we'd follow that path of, of Scotchbox. So Scotchbox would be the other big one which actually has a pre-provisioned base box. Um, the, the, the difficulty there is really when you're wanting to make those changes. So when you're wanting to make that tiny little change to the memory limit in PHP, you've really got to get into bash and you're, and you're writing scripts. What about a bit of Ansible on top of Scotchbox? Um, I guess so. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess you could script the Ansible install and run playbooks, but your overhead to make that tiny little configuration change is, is probably just, just too much, I think. Thank you. Mm. Um, we've got one time for more, so... Yeah. Hey, thanks, Tom. Yeah. Um, my question is just on the workflow, and um, whether, uh, like when you actually install the VM, you said you're getting support for an IDE within the VM. Yep. So is the expectation that you're developing within the VM, or is there a shared folder which is kind of like uh, the VM is exposing through the web server? Uh, for Sprintbox, are you talking, or, um, or Bigbox? This one? Yeah, okay, so this one really, uh, it's designed so that you'd normally have an IDE on your host machine, and that will have a folder that is synced inside the virtual machine. Um, I personally don't really ever log into the Vagrant. Um, I use Drush aliases remotely and, and talk to it, yeah. Yeah, thanks. So just want to Check yep. on that. That's great. All right. I'm sure we want to get to lunch. I squeezed one more in there. Um, so just about lunch, it'll be out here. And we just want you to know that you can either eat lunch here, but you can also move out onto the terrace. So don't forget there's a terrace that you can take your lunch out on to eat. Um, so I want to thank Tom. I love Beatbox. I love watching it. I'm glad that Tom did the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks for joining. Cheers.